So today we're going to discuss about privilege access management in today's lecture. So privilege access management is a subdomain of cybersecurity and it's meant to actually safeguard against privilege users. And privilege users can come in many different forms and they have specific powerful controls and accesses to very critical data and assets within an IT environment or within an enterprise environment. So they could have access into systems that have personally identifiable information, financial records, credit card information, health information, and many other systems assets that are critical to the survival of an enterprise. So one example that we can see here is we have a super user, so SU. So if you are a Linux administrator, Windows Server administrator, endpoint administrator, and many other different privileges that you have access into, chances are you have access into the most critical data within an enterprise. And with this in mind, it meant that you have a lot of privileges. You can directly go into databases, file systems, systems that are holding critical paths to specific process and business process that could actually mean that you could take it down, you could change directions on it, even though chances are you're there for maintenance, you're there to make sure that the service level agreements are held upon. And of course, uh, you also have accesses into network devices, wireless access points, switches, routers, firewalls, even security systems as well that are meant to safeguard the entire enterprise environment. And likewise, you have direct access into the laptops and the desktop devices. And some of these devices could also be held by the board of directors or by people who have substantial power and control within the enterprise. And it is imperative that your accesses, if compromised, is to be managed. Because if you can directly log in to the system used by the CEO, chief executive officer, or chief financial officer of anyone who has empower and authority to manage a company, then chances are you can look into the critical and sensitive data within those machines. And therefore, this comes back to the initial requirement of this topic, which is privilege access management. That means managing privilege accesses in the environment. So with this in mind, what happened is that if you, if your account was to get compromised, and again, chances are it may not be your system administrator account, it could be because the account was compromised as part of a cyber attack or the account was compromised part of a phishing email campaign. Again, all of this mean that you could jeopardize the entire operation of the entire enterprise. So it is imperative that we are able to manage the privilege accesses across to all these critical systems through the privilege access management control against the administrator and the super user accounts as well as all of those accounts that can have an impact on the IT assets. So that is critical for today's discussion. So of course, one way for us is to introduce privilege access management controls as the federated control right at the center to actually help federate the identity access management. So instead of directly assessing into the service or into the databases or into the endpoints, the super user administrators go into a vault. So in this identity access vault, this is where they actually draw down the super user account or the administrator account. And then from there, the account is then furnished and managed by the moni monitored by the security team, who is continuously looking at the different kind of accesses you're going through, the authorization you're going through, the authentication you're going through, and then be able to look at what you're doing in the environment. So of course, from the vault, that is when you have a access dotted line access to the Active Directory, which manages across all of the users and the identities within an enterprise. And then you draw out your identity related directly to you so that you become accountable for all of the accesses that you're going to proceed forward with across the enterprise. And this could mean an introduction of multi-factor authentication so that there is no non-rebediation in the environment. And this is critical as well so that you draw the credentials, the critical credentials from the vault, which are then relate to you to, in a temporal manner through a time-based mechanism that you can then do your troubleshooting against the servers, do your troubleshooting against the databases, do your troubleshooting against the endpoints and the desktops that you are supposed to do as part of your IT operation. So of course, with this in mind, what are the advantages of implementing privilege access management? So number one, we have password management because chances are you have hundreds and thousands of systems, endpoints, desktops, 
access management across your routers, your network devices, and many other capabilities that all need a password. And this privilege access management platform or console or policy allow you to manage those passwords seamlessly. So you only need one credential to be able to access specific system, network devices, IT assets, and from there on, you do not have to manage so many different passwords, which may then result in compromise. And number two, in terms of automation, in terms of automation, we want to automate how we are provisioning, deprovisioning certain users, certain accounts in the environment, and then how they are tied from a particular system administrator to a system device. So again, this automation helps streamline security operations so that you can then focus on your primary work of trying to streamline operations. And we also have managing access. So managing accesses is because you have so many different systems, applications in the environment that you need to manage. It's also critical for us to understand what kind of privileges you have and the accesses and the entitlements towards those system and IT devices. So that through a central console, a central access management platform, we are able to manage all of your single access tied to your credential. And from there on, we are able to understand where are the areas where you may have privileged creep where you may have entitlements that should have otherwise been taken away or be removed completely so this allow a streamlined singular report to tell you exactly what are the accesses for this super user or for this privilege account and of course in terms of session management because super users system administrators they have a lot of power they have a lot of access and we want to know what they're doing during those sessions so when they're assessing a critical financial system we want to know what are they doing to those systems are they changing database records are they changing financial information are there any configuration changes are there any change management requests that are coming in into the system and then it has been approved by the management before any attempt or any changes are being pushed out and committed into those systems so the session management allow us the ability to audit what has happened during that period of time and then of course to flag out any of anomalies or deviations from the norm so that we can flag out and stop those attempts to change configurations or data of those critical assets and of course in terms of auditing reporting chances are a lot of it companies will need to comply to regulation they need to comply to industry standards and from there on can your access management be able to help you automate that piece of the business process so that you can continue to be compliant to, to, to certain institutions, to certain regulations, and from there on, automatically generate reports and tell you where are all the deviations, where are they out of compliance, so that you can enforce those policies so that your enterprise is continuously complying to those regulations that you're subjected to in your industry, in your sector, in your country of work, and this brings us to expand the advantages between all of the factors that we have spoke about on the previous slide. So number one is on password management. Because there's so many different complex passwords that are used in endpoint systems and many other different IT assets and devices, we want to be able to streamline and automate that piece. So number one is in terms of complex password creation. So when you have a lot of IT assets, you have hundreds and thousands of network devices, databases, file systems, you want to be able to manage the creation of those passwords because passwords are subjected to certain type of character, certain type of length, and so on and so forth. So it is critical that we are able to create those passwords for the administrators without the administrators knowing the password exactly and then furnishing those credentials to their administrators when they actually need to access those systems. And number two, in terms of password storage so rather than storing the password on an excel sheet or saving it to a a web browser on firefox or on chrome and and all of those web browsing web browsers which can very easily be be removed or be able to decrypt those passwords we want to save them into a password vault so in that vault we'll be able to encrypt and secure those information without any hackers being able to compromise the system and be able to access those passwords. And finally, the third point are, is on encryption keys. So again, in order to manage all these complex passwords and sessions, you need encryption keys. And encryption key management is particularly complex. So a, a vault will allow you, or privilege access management platform will allow you to manage all of these encryption keys within a single console so that from there on, you don't have to lose your encryption key and be able 
uh, and be unable to log into many of these critical assets anymore. So in terms of automation, we're talking about provisioning and deprovisioning of privileged accounts in the environment. So whenever there are certain special projects that could ha be happening in your enterprise, we want to be able to manage what kind of privileged accounts are being furnished into the environment to help aid and support that particular project. So the provisioning of these privileged accounts without a privilege access management is provisioned on system to system basis or on network traffic policies basis. So with a privilege access management system in place, we know which accounts are ad hoc, which are service accounts, and then be able to deprovision these accounts based on a timeline basis, based on approval basis, based on workflow basis. And from there on, we are better able to manage many of these ad hoc accounts that could be coming up or sprung up because of sp certain special requirements and then be able to remove them later on. And of course, we're talking about managing of access. So how do we control the policies that these privileged accounts have to the IT assets? And again, there are many different types of privileged accounts. So it could be a system user, it could be an endpoint desktop engineer, and many different accounts that could be residing on an enterprise. So we want to be able to, ex to manage the accesses of each and every of those privileged accounts. So some of these accounts are tied to systems, some are tied to domains, some are tied to work, some are tied to projects. And we want to track what accesses and entitlements are available to those accounts and be able to group those accesses and then be able to build reports and record deviation when it happens on the fly so then we can flag out any kind of anomaly and be able to subject them to security hardening or to disable those accounts very quickly and this requires us to manage those accesses and of course we have session management so whenever a privileged account user was to access a it asset a network device or a a system on the environment again we want to be able to track what that privileged account is doing in the environment and this is critical because we we want to have the ability to for the administrators for the privileged users to be accountable of what they are doing to those systems so again it could be a laptop that is owned by the ceo the cfo or someone who is having executive capability power within an enterprise and when a system administrator were to access into that particular machine we want to know what they're doing to the machine are they reading a financial record are they reading a quarterly report that is about to be published are they looking at confidential trade secrets so again we want to know what the administrators are doing to those privileged accounts so that we have better way of protecting and hardening against non-remediation so that we put those administrators accountable for what they're doing into the systems and of course we have the auditing and reporting capability because a lot of enterprises they need to comply to industry standards or regulation so that they can continue their work and to give their consumer their customers the trust that they're working within compliance so again the the different type of Reports again industry standards could be like for Center for Internet Security CIS or Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act for the healthcare industry. Again, we want to be able to audit the activities that the privileged accounts are assessing into the system, what are the changes they are enforcing in the environment, and are they doing anything that could be out of compliance against regulation. And when we can see that and we can put this into automated process, this allows us to flag out any of those anomalies very quickly so that we can then flag them out and be able to enforce the security policies in place without, without impacting the system in questions. So like what we mentioned earlier, to summarize the whole of today's lecture, we have the privilege access management that is meant for us to actually manage the privileged users, which could be system administrators, super users, engineers in the environment, and then be able to safeguard against potential abuse or potential cybercrime. So the number one point that we discussed and expanded on is on the password management. That's, and that's about managing a lot of complex passwords across a lot of devices and systems in the environment so that we can have a centralized vault that could actually safeguard many of these passwords so they can no longer be subjected to decryption techniques in the, in the cyber attack. And number two, on automation, it's about the different kind of projects and special requirements that could be coming for an enterprise. And we need to be able to provision and deprovision certain privileged accounts during those special requirements or project timeline. And the automation introduced allow us to streamline the security operation for those privileged accounts.
The third point that we went through and expanded on is on managing those excesses across the privilege accounts because different privilege accounts can have different kind of excesses. One account could be subjected to specific narrowed down requirements and databases and another could be on file system, another on the IT network assets, so and so on and so forth. So we want to be able to segment and segregate the different kind of accesses each of these privilege accounts actually have in the environment. And of course, on the fourth point, we have session management. So whenever a super user, a system administrator were to access into a critical system, we want to be able to manage and see what kind of session activities this particular user is assessing into the environment because they could be assessing into financial records that are very sensitive or in confidential data or they are highly secretive for a company. And on the last point, it's about auditing and reporting because a lot of companies, a lot of enterprises, they need to comply to certain regulations or industry standards and from there on they want to use the privilege access management to actually help generate some of these reports automatically whenever a privilege account was to access certain kind of critical data or certain kind of sensitive information and from there on it can generate those reports and show compliance or out of compliance against specific type of policies and from there on they can decide what to do whether to harden or to secure the entire environment so with that, we come to the end of today's lecture on privilege access management, and I hope you learned something valuable. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below, and I'll try my best to answer your questions.